Welcome to this week's Monday Moments. And the, and the subject we're looking at today is uh, just how interesting are we? Me and you. How interesting are you? I went to a school reunion some years ago, and um, I have to tell you, so this was from my secondary school, the very first reunion I'd ever attended. And I was terrified. Um, I was terrified because I was... I was one of the shy boys, the, the, the dorks who, who wasn't popular, didn't have a lot of friends, was frightened of my own shadow at the age of 14 and 15, and uh, was never sure that I quite fitted in. And here I was going to my first school reunion, and everybody, of course, was going to be more commercially and, and career-wise successful than me. Everybody was going to be rolling in wealth. Everybody was going to be better looking. Uh, than they'd ever been before. Everybody was going to have had a more fulfilling and meaningful life than me. You know what I mean. I was petrified. And this was a pre-reunion meeting up at Covent Garden in, in, in a pub somewhere. A very nice place. And, and as I sat there, one of the terrors that I had was a memory uh, of, of someone in our class when I was just 14 and 15 years old. And that someone was uh, a girl called Maggie. Now, from a, a shallow perspective of a 15 year old, um, Maggie wasn't the prettiest girl in, in the class, but she was definitely the most attractive in the sense that she attracted people to her. And when people came to her and talked with her, just observing her from the other side of the classroom, I could see they went away often smiling or certainly happier than when they first approached her. She just seemed to have this influence on people around her. And, and that frightened me because I thought, I, I can't do any of that. Um, nobody's that much happier just by meeting me on a school day. Uh, so so that, that capacity, that capability really worried me as a teenager. because I didn't understand what was happening. Anyway. This was the day of the uh, pre-reunion get together in, in Covent Garden in London. And I was sitting there nervously uh, with a drink of, I don't know, um, uh, soda and lime or something. And guess who should walk in to this place in Covent Garden? It was Maggie. And she came moving her way through the crowd of people around me uh, that I was comfortably chatting to because uh, this was 40 years on, and, and she threw her arms around me and said, it's little Dave Scarlett. And I felt 10 years old, not 15 even, I felt 10. Uh, and we got chatting. And she turned to me after 30 minutes of just sitting down and chatting. She said, do you know what? You have, mate, you have lived the most fascinating life. I thought, really? Uh, I'm just me, I'm little Dave Scarlett. Uh, I may be a lot older and I may be a, a leadership coach now and I've been a financial planner for 20 years um, and done all the things before then, but I'm still little Dave Scarlett. She said, no, your life is fascinating. And I'd shared with her stories of my five children and uh, the work that I'd done in my career and how I changed from uh, being one career to another and was running my own business and was a Christian minister and, and I've been teaching for the last few years, uh, undergrads and grads in, in philosophy and leadership and religion. Um, and she found that fascinating. Well, I left that day no longer terrified. I left that day feeling a person who was fascinating. And so Maggie had, had allowed me to feel like that. Now, this is pretty basic, isn't it? You and I know the old adage that to be interesting, you first need to be interested. But it did cause me to vow in my new career that I would become fascinated before each meeting and each conversation I had with a prospective or existing client. I would be fascinated beforehand. And if I wasn't, my sense was there's either something wrong with me, I'm too engrossed with myself, well, there's something wrong with this potential or existing relationship and something had to change probably starting with me so that's what maggie taught me about being interesting 
first be fascinated and interested in the person sitting with you. That could be a client. It could be a member of your team. And the question I have to leave with you just on this section of, of are you that interesting is, are you interested? Are you fascinated as you walk into each conversation? If not, what is going on? The second aspect of, of are you interesting um, is, uh, is, is brought together by a couple of experiences. One I had just last week speaking to Roland, who, um, uh, if you watch last week's Monday Moments, is a director of Time for Advice. And Roland loves flying. He's passionate about flying his, 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 his own private plane and has invited me to fly with him. And you know what? I've never, ever flown in a, in a small private plane. I've never had that experience of, of soaring through the sky in, in that very intimate way. I'd love to do that. And I found him and what he was doing uh, outside of business absolutely fascinating. He became interesting to me because he had interests outside of business. Now, you and I, sometimes uh, we hate business, we love it, it does all sorts of things to us, but you know what, Bis uh, life isn't about business. Business is about life. And uh, after this mortality, we're not gonna take much with us, maybe just three things, our character, our relationships, and the things that we, we really do understand and could be called wisdom, not information, there's too much of that, but things we have knowledge and understanding about. That's all we can take. Our business will stay behind. It will be nothing to us anymore. So business is, is, is exciting, but it's not the whole of life. Life is not about business. And so the aspect about being interesting uh, in business is really this. Do you have any interests outside of just making more money, making more revenue, winning more clients and growing bigger and bigger? Do you? Are you that interesting? Um, I was sitting in my garden with my wife, Wendy, um, having lived most of my adult life in hatred of gardening. Absolutely hated it. Probably from experiences I had as a teenager when I was forced by my mother to do gardening whilst the pretty girl next door, who I really was attracted to, wanted to go out with, would look at me with, with pity, as if to say, you poor fellow. Um, and that, that gave me a hatred of gardening until one day Wendy said to me, we have to do something about that. And I said, well, about what? She said, look, the bees, they're fascinating. Look at them, they're beautiful, they're stunning. They're, they're, they, they disobey logic and, uh, and physics and they fly. But they're also disappearing. And no pollinators means no pollination, she said. And, and my daughters then reminded me, and dad, no pollination means no crops, and no crops means no people. It really is that crudely and bluntly fact. Uh, it's a bit like the connection between cigarettes and cancer. We eventually get there in our heads after 50 years and work out we need to stop this thing. Um, so my daughters took me up to Standon, which is a National Trust property with beautiful kitchen gardens and gardens, and said, Dad, you need to become a volunteer and learn what this ecosystem of ours is all about. And what they taught me, my daughters, because they're pretty smart and they're adults now, not children anymore. So they speak down to me, not me to them. And they teach me and I don't teach them anymore. They said, Dad, you're, you're, not, you're not looking on at the ecosystem. You're not looking on with sympathy at wildlife. You are in the ecosystem. You are part of wildlife, whether you like it or not. It's all one thing. And you can't be arrogant and just sit and, and assume you can observe stuff and make judgments on it. You're in it and everything affects you and whether you live or not and how you will live or not. So that taught me a few lessons. I became interested in gardening. And, and then I started studying bees and butterflies and I created a bee and butterfly garden. And, and why am I telling you this? Because I regularly link what's happening in that garden to the wildlife and, and the, the brutal uh, you know, live or die ecosystem going on in that garden of mine into business and, and into the blogs and the videos and the conferences and the webinars I create. I use examples from that bean butterfly garden 
because what happens in there is actually quite exciting and 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 ruthless and, and it's not just pretty it, it really is what life and death is all about um so i have become interested and made my material i've been told more interesting because of that interest so that's it really two aspects of are you that interesting number one are you interested in other folk more than yourself is there more to you than you and the people i find that are most fascinating and influential and impress me most are those who serve humanity um, as well as love their family first but they then go on and serve humanity a life becomes more than them and theirs it is the people around them seven and a half billion people that they can touch and serve and lift up and, and, and leave a mark in this world. Um, they become more interesting because there's more of them to be interested about. Uh, it, when they look at themselves to find who they are, there's more of them to find. So those are my two messages. Are you interested and therefore interesting? And do you have interests and therefore there's more of you to be interested about? Um, I look forward to seeing you in next week's Monday Moments. Thank you for joining me.